So we must become more concerned with the dreamer instead of the dream. Because the dreamer gives us the answer. And so we search for the who in life, and we no longer will seek a thing in life. And it tells us that who is Christ. And the who is the one who created all things. So I must find the who. I must find the I in man. I must discover what that is. What is the self inside? We can start simply by noticing that no matter what I fear inside myself, no matter what happens, no matter what happens inside of myself, I am doing it. I know that I'm the cause of my fear inside of me. And so fear becomes no longer something that feels independent like a nightmare, but it becomes an illusion. It becomes something that can be conquered, something to let go of, because I know I'm the one creating it. And so when I said in my meditation that there is nothing to fear in here, I meant it. Because the only thing that there is to fear is what we create. And we don't have to create fear. No matter how far you've gone into your mind with creating the fearful thought, you can break it. You can stop it. You don't have to continue with it. And it's learning to say no to it. Learning to become indifferent to it. You're becoming indifferent to certain parts of yourself. You're becoming indifferent to creating in a certain way. You no longer want to create out of fear. You want to create out of abundance or out of love or whatever it is that you want. This is very important to know, to, to, to realize that the fears in me really aren't my own. Most of the time they're given to you by other people. Most of the time you're taught to fear this and fear that. And you have the power to let go of them. But that power is held by you, the inner man, who's creating it. And so I want you, meaning you, the inner man, to see that you're the one who causes your own fears. And so I'll never have to go outside of myself to discover myself or to find myself. If I were to right now imagine myself at a beach and I close my eyes and I find myself not where I'm sitting in front of a mic, but I'm at a beach, I see that myself is at a beach. So myself is in me. And so if I want to change myself, I have to go inward. That's where myself lies. And I exalt myself, or I change myself, whatever it is you want to say. Regardless, it's, in my opinion, an exalting. I find it to be very relieving when you move from a state of fear inside, you, the inner man, and you find yourself in a land of abundance, or a land of freedom, or a, as I said, you find the mental breath of relief. You mentally find the promised land. You mentally find the place within you that you desire to be. You don't wait for it to happen. And so night after night, you fall asleep as the one who already is, not the one who is waiting to be. This is the difference between how one sleeps in failure and one sleeps in success. And you don't want to be like a feather that gets blown around by the wind with rumors and, and people's uh, doubts and opinions. You stand firm in what you have convicted yourself of, what you've persuaded yourself of. And it's truly... It's sacred. You are seeing and hearing things that mortals cannot hear or see. It's something sacred. It's special. And it's a gift to yourself. And so we have the choice to listen to ourselves, which what I mean by that is listen to the inner man that already is that. When I fall asleep tonight and I want to fall asleep as someone who already is X, I have a choice to listen to that or to listen to the doubts or my senses of others. I have a choice. Who am I going to? Who's going to be my Lord? Who will I obey? And so I have to choose every night my Lord, and I'll find that my Lord is within me. My Savior is within me. And if you just listen closely, if you just listen inside yourself, you will hear the fulfillment of your dream. You will hear it, and it will taste good to your ears. I've been given gifts in Christmas and occasions, and it feels good to receive a gift. But I cannot think of a more freeing feeling than to abandon my reasoning and to actually hear my desire fulfilled or to actually see it, to actually see myself experiencing or being what I want. I cannot think of something more fulfilling because it's intimate. 
it's not something that anyone knows that I'm doing. So I can truly let go of the external and I'll find the who instead of looking outside for the cause. I will find it within myself. And so the world will always convince you that things are outside of you, that the cause is outside of you, that the God is outside of you, that everything is outside of you and it's happening to you. But just practice, live upon the idea as if it's reversed. See if you can reverse the order of things. And go to the maker, go to the who. Find the dreamer and stop feeling persuaded and stuck in the dream. When you fall asleep and you find yourself awake inside of your own dream, the last thing you will do is feel stuck. The last thing you will do is feel that you can't get out of it or that you can't change it. There's an example that Neville gave was that he's speaking about the inner man. He said, imagine yourself chained to a bench. That you can't, you're not free and you can't leave it. You're bound by this bench. And then he said, imagine yourself running. And he said, in this instant, you freed yourself from the chains of that bench. You freed yourself from that bondage. And now you're running. He's speaking solely about the inner man. And so you inside yourself might be in a position you dislike. You might be in a position where you feel like you are shackled or you're in bondage. It's up to you to free yourself, meaning you, the inner man, from that position inside of imagination and choose the position you want to be in. Move inside, use your imaginal feet and find yourself in a new place. Walk somewhere new, walk as a different person inside. And you'll see that it was just in an instant you went from being in bondage to your, pre, your one state to now being fulfilled in a new state. And that's all it takes. You moved, it might not seem that way because you didn't physically move your feet, but you moved internally. You have changed a position mentally. Operate now from that position. So you no longer, as Neville said, think about it, which would be to, really, I think thinking about it is just simply desiring it. It's simply, oh, it'd be nice. You just think about how nice it would be instead of actually feeling that it is so. It's a completely different feeling. They're night and day. One is one is wishful. The other one is certain. The other one is knowing. The other one is it's convicted of this truth of oneself. It's convicted. It's persuaded. It knows. It's the difference. So no matter how long you've been in one state, it really is that simple. No matter how long you've been bound to that bench, you can see yourself running. And so you will eventually leave that old state. You will die to it. You will spread its ashes and you will find yourself resurrected in a new state. And so where I position myself inside of my own imagination is up to me entirely. But I do not enter these states as though I'm unworthy to receive them or as though they are bigger than I am. And so then all states become mine. And then you'll start to live in abundance within. And you'll see that like all things, abundance is also within you. Your confidence is within you. Everything that you need is within you. If on the bridge to your fulfillment you need knowledge, you'll be given the knowledge. You'll be given the words to say, You'll be given the confidence you need. You don't lack anything.